In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to use GIMP to create animated text. You'll notice here that not only is the text changing size, but the light source is moving as well. Let's start by creating a new project. So go to the File menu and select New. Set the width to 400 and the height to 200, and then press OK. And now let's add some text. So click on the Text tool, and to change the font, click on this button. And I'm going to select Sans Bold. Then set the font size to 125 pixels, and make sure that the color is set to black. Then click on the canvas area and type your text. You can then move the text by clicking on the Move tool, and then drag the text to the center. And now let's resize the text layer. To do that, come over here and right-click on the text layer and select Layer to Image Size. And we no longer need this background layer, so select it, and then click on the Delete button that looks like a trash can. And now, right-click on the layer and select Alpha to Selection. This will select just our text. And then let's reduce the size of this selection a little. So to do that, click on the Select menu and select Shrink. Set this value to 2 pixels and then press OK. And now we're going to fill in this new selection with a different color. So click on the Bucket Fill tool and then click on the foreground color. Then select a red color. I'm using 9E0000. Next, come down to the Tool Options and click on Fill Whole Selection. And now we can fill the selected area by clicking inside the selection. And now we're going to give our text some texture. We'll start by setting the background color to black. You can do that by first clicking on this little button with the black and white squares, which will set our default colors. Then click on this little double arrow button here to swap the foreground and background colors and now the background color is set to black. Next, click on the Filters menu and select Distorts and then Mosaic. And here we're going to change some of the settings. Make sure the tiling primitives is set to hexagon. Change the tile height to 10 and the tile neatness to 1 and the color variation to 0. Then uncheck Color Averaging and also uncheck Allow Tile Splitting. Then down here, check the box next to FG BG Lighting and then click OK. And now we can turn off the selection by clicking on the Select menu and select None. Now the animation that we're going to make will consist of 8 frames and in GIMP each layer represents a frame. So we're going to make 8 different layers and the text size will be different from each layer to the next. Then we'll finish by applying a lighting effect to each frame. So let's work on changing the text size now. And to do that, we're going to use the Eye Warp filter. So click on the Filters menu and select Distorts and then Eye Warp. And then for the Deform mode, click on Grow, then set the Deform Radius to 175 and the Deform Amount to 1. And now come up here and click on the Animate tab. We can use this to automatically create some of our frames. So click on this checkbox next to Animate and set the number of frames to 5. Then position your cursor over the center of the text and click the left mouse button four times. This will be the size of the text at the end of the fifth frame. Now press OK. This just created five frames for us that are labeled frame 0 through frame 4. And with each frame, the center of the text is larger than the frame before it. We no longer need this text layer on the bottom, so we can delete it by first selecting it and then pressing the delete button. Our smallest text is on the bottom layer that's named frame 0. The text reaches its maximum size at frame 4. After reaching the maximum size, what we want to happen is for the text size to then decrease back down to its minimum size. And we can do that by using some of these frames in reverse order. 
So after frame 4, we want to use frame 3, and then frame 2, and then frame 1. So select frame 3, and make a copy of it using the duplicate button. And then move this new layer to the top by clicking on the green up arrow. Then make a copy of frame 2, and move it to the top by clicking on the green up arrow a few times. Then make a copy of frame 1, and move it to the top by clicking on the green up arrow multiple times. Let's go ahead and rename these top three layers. To do that, double click on the layer name and type the new name. Call this one frame 5. This one frame 6. And this one frame 7. We still have more to do, but to see what this animation looks like so far, click on the filters menu and select animation and then playback. Then press the play button. This repeatedly cycles through all the layers. We can see that the text is growing and then shrinking so everything looks good so far. So I'll go ahead and close this window now. Next we're going to add a lighting effect to each frame. So click on the bottom layer to select it. Then click on the filters menu and select light and shadow and then lighting effects. Now click on the light tab and set the intensity to 2. Then click on the bump map tab and click the checkbox next to enable bump mapping. This drop down menu lets you specify which layer to use as the bump map image. You need to make sure that you set this to the currently selected layer. The layer that we currently have selected is named frame 0, so find frame 0 on the drop down menu and select it. Then over here you will see a blue dot. This dot is the light source. For frame 0, drag this dot to the left side of the G. Now press OK to apply the light effect to this frame. Now select the frame 1 layer. We need to open the lighting effects filter again, so click on the filters menu. And since the lighting effects filter is the most recent filter that we have used, we can find it here near the top. So just click on Reshow Lighting Effects. Then click on the Bump Map tab. Since our Frame 1 layer is currently selected, go to this drop down menu and select Frame 1. It's important to always make sure that the selection in this drop down box always matches the currently selected layer. Now come over here and drag this blue dot to the top of the G. Then press OK to apply the lighting effect. Now we're going to do this again for the frame 2 layer. So select it, click on filter, and reshow lighting effects. Click on the bump map tab, select frame 2, and then move the blue dot to the top of the M. And then you can press OK to apply the lighting effect. I'm going to pause the video while I finish applying the lighting effects to the remaining layers. But first, I'll let you know where to position the blue dot for each layer. For the next layer, put the blue dot at the top of the P, and then the right side of the P, then the bottom of the P, then the bottom of the M, and then the bottom of the G. So I'll pause the video now and come back when I'm done. Okay, I just finished applying the lighting effects to this last layer, and so we're almost done. Now you can see here that the background for all of the layers is transparent, which allows other layers to show through. To prevent this, we are going to set the background color to black for each of the layers. To do this, first make sure that the background color here is set to black. Then right click on the top layer and select Remove Alpha Channel. Then repeat this for all of the other channels. Now we're done, so let's play our animation. So click on the Filters menu, and select Animation, and then Playback. Then click on the Play button. Here we can see our text changing size and the light source moving. 
Our animation can now be exported as a GIF file, which will allow it to be displayed in a web browser. So to do that, let's first close this window, and now click on the File menu and select Export. Then choose a directory and give your file a name. I'll call this textanimation.gif. Make sure that you use .gif as the extension name. Then click on the Export button, and this will open up another dialog box. Check the box next to As Animation. Also make sure that the box next to Loop Forever is checked, and then click the Export button. By the way, don't confuse exporting your GIF file with saving your project. To save your project, click on the File menu, and then select either Save or Save As. Well, now that the GIF file has been exported, we can view it with a web browser. If you have a website, you can display it on a web page like you would a normal image. You can also test it by directly opening the file with a web browser. The way that I do this is by first navigating to the file on my computer, then I just drag and drop the file onto my web browser. Well, that concludes this video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe and leave a comment.